so um, we cover a variety of topics. I'll be focusing on the ones that um, are most of data science relevance. Um, in a nutshell, we look at fuel reactivity and combustion, and we're trying to understand the reactivity of various fuels at a more detailed level. Um, in a nutshell, our 15-second motivation, um, there's a whole bunch of engine concepts that become possible when you start really pushing the limits of combustion stability. So turns out you can get to much better fuel economies. That's not an insignificant number when you start thinking about the fact that 85% of our current energy usage in the United States comes from combustion. So if we can get 20 to 50% better fuel economy, that's a very large dollar sign. Um, now, there's some difficulties associated with these sorts of processes. Um, they tend to be extremely sensitive to the fuel chemistry. In fact, they are so sensitive to the fuel chemistry that you more or less have to take radical approaches toward understanding these sorts of um, interactions that can occur in combustion systems. Um, and CFD was actually a major player, so predictive simulation was a major player in terms of even coming up with these concepts and optimizing them to be stable. Um, so we focus on two aspects. You know, from an uncertainty quantification perspective, there's not just parametric uncertainties, uncertainties in our model parameters, but then there's also structural uncertainties. So without going into a whole bunch of detail about what those structural uncertainties are, they exist and they're lurking behind the scenes in the models um, that we're also trying to figure out and we're also trying to come up with some methods that we can identify them. Um, but here, in a nutshell, you can't read any of that and it doesn't really matter um, because as it turns out, combustion reactions don't just happen in a single step. They occur in a whole sequence of intermediate steps. So you start with fuel and air, uh, fuel being already a multi-component sort of mixture. Um, in between, you end up with tens of thousands of intermediate species before you end up with your final products, which are mostly CO2 and water. Um, so with this soup of intermediate species, they can all undergo simultaneous competitive reactions. Um, so you end up with tens to hundreds of thousands of possible reactions. Um, each of those occur with rates that are temperature, pressure, and sometimes even mixture composition dependent. So in a nutshell, there is an incredible amount of parameters that are important for these sorts of um, systems. And for the most part, we don't have a whole lot of data to actually constrain them. Um, so one approach that we've been taking is sort of a multi-scale uncertainty quantification approach. So attacking the problem from both ends. So usually people, when they do uncertainty quantification, might just use global observables. We've been trying to incorporate some of the basic theoretical foundations so that um, the optimized results we get are guaranteed to be physically meaningful. Um, we have some results that would show that we actually learn more about molecular properties than um, sort of standard level first principles calculations can provide, and they end up agreeing with very high level first principles calculations. We get similar results for the macroscopic observables. Um, our other approach is to simply try to gather enormous amounts of data. Um, so we're working on putting together some automated experiments in our lab that um, could operate in conjunction with uncertainty quantification approaches, um, do experimental design to figure out what the best experiment is to run, um, and then gather that data autonomously and then pass it back. So our goal and you know, our current estimates would say that we could probably get thousands of data points per day. Um, just by varying different conditions and things of that nature, and hopefully start to unravel some of those complex networks that could depend on tens of thousands of parameters. Now, ultimately, we need methods that are relatively fast because to keep up with experiments that are running every 10 minutes uh, and processing the data and picking the next experiment, um, 
you only have about a 10 minute window to figure out what the next best experiment is, or you could look at some sort of stacking way of approaching the problem. Um, another challenge we face is, what if we don't have this diagram right in the first place? Um, is there a way that we can identify potential structural uncertainties? Uncertainties in what this diagram actually looks like, what some of the reactions are that we're missing, some of the species are that we're not thinking about. Um, so those are some of the things that we're interested in and I'm of course curious to hear anyone's thoughts about. So thanks.